Good evening or morning, Photoshop cadets, or afternoon. Today, we're going to go through an impromptu paint technique inside of Photoshop that was done in the meetup a little while ago. Apologies for this class being so long and delay. Um, hopefully, we'll get on schedule and rectify that for you ASAP. So, in this particular one, we're going to start with this uh, image of this nice uh, Furby right here. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and get him converted over to a threshold and then we're going to convert it to a selection. So the important thing to understand here is your subject has to be high contrast to their background. As you can see here, we have very little detail in the background and uh, he stands out quite a bit from it. So for threshold, I'm just going to go ahead and go to my image menu down to adjustments and I'm just going to choose threshold right from the list. You could do this with an adjustment layer if you prefer and then merge them together afterwards or do a select through all layers, but we're going to keep it relatively simple here. So again, that's image adjustments threshold. And all we're going to do with this one slider that appears is we're just going to adjust it just so we have as much detail as we can um, and not go too crazy to where it's like he's blown out completely or that you don't see any little fine details like his fur or eyes or anything. So we're just going to kind of adjust back and forth. And this is totally subjective. All right, there's no right or wrong here. So that looks about good. I've got mine set to about 49. This won't always be the number, but in this case, that seems fair. And with that set, I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK to apply it. As you see, when you hit OK, the preview kind of renders out, and it actually gets a little more detail than you'd actually see from the preview. So it's kind of a little bit of a, a benefit there. Now, I do understand that when you're taking a close look at this, if I zoom in, doing Control plus a few times, this is not a grayscale image. This is actually solid black and white, all right? So there's no subtle values or tones here or transitional um, pixels. It just kind of goes either solid black or solid white. These are aliased, all right? So there's no little semi-transparent pixels in between to kind of fade between the colors. Um, so just understand that if you zoom in really close, it does look pixelated, but it's supposed to, Okay. So with that set, our next step, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to bring in the layer that we want to turn this into the painting. So if I go to File menu and choose Place Embedded, um, from the menu I'm going to go ahead and choose this Abstract Painting Image and press Place. And I'm just going to place it right over the pup here. Um, as long as it covers them, that's fine. You can scale this out by dragging on the corners or sides if you want to. There's, again, there's no right or wrong. Or if you want to flip it around, you can always rotate it and do the opposite. You can go the opposite direction. So uh, it's arbitrary as to how you want to set this up. But once you have it covering the whole canvas, just press the Enter key on the keyboard to apply. Now, coming over to our layers for a moment, let's turn off this top layer and then select the background layer behind it. So I'm back on the uh, the dog layer, and I'm gonna grab my magic wand tool. Now again, that's W, the shortcut key W from your uh, um, keyboard, or you can do shift W if you need to, to kind of toggle between the multiple tools in that particular slot. But once you have the right one, if you take a look at your options up at the top here, we're just gonna make sure this is set up for new selection. Sample is set to point sample. Tolerance can stay at 32. Anti-alias doesn't really matter in this case because there's uh, we're not trying to soften the edges at all. Although you could, I guess, but it probably won't come out that great. Uh, contiguous is not checked. And sample layers is not checked either because I'm already on the layer I need to be. Now, the big thing, contiguous, um, in this case, the reason why I'm saying keep it unchecked is because if it's turned on and you click on a little portion of the dog, as you can see, it only selects pixels that are adjacent that are the same color as the one I clicked on but then it stops when it gets to the edge. So in order to be able to pick up all the dark pixels here, I wanna make sure I turn off contiguous. Let me do a control D or command D to deselect real quick, and then come back in and go ahead and click just in the dark area. And as you can see, it selects all the dog from there. Now with the marching ants set, if I come back up to this top layer here for abstract painting and turn it back on again, little blank square there, click to re-enable it. I can go ahead and come on down and click on my add layer mask icon here. And when I do that, it's gonna trim off all the excess so that all that's left is the picture of the dog, but we are not done yet. We are going to add a little bit more detail to this by putting a canvas texture right behind it. So to do that, if I click on the background one more time and I go to file, place embedded, I'm gonna place in 
this abstract ancient art image. I'm going to go ahead and hit place. By the way, all these images are downloaded from pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S.com. If you put your mouse cursor outside this box, I'm going to rotate it. But also, I'm going to hold on the shift key while I do so. The reason why is if I just click and drag, it rotates arbitrarily. But if I hold on my shift key while I do it, as you can see, it locks in 15 degree increments. So I can make it rotate perfectly 90 degrees. And I'm also going to drag out those corners. Now, if you want to, if it, for some reason, like sometimes this is enabled for me, sometimes it's not. It's no big deal. If this is scaling non-uniformly, as you can see, it kind of squishes and squashes here and there. You can hold on your shift key while you do this to ensure that it scales out uniformly. Now, if it is already uh, locked to scale and proportions, as you see this little icon here up at the top, if that is enabled, if you hold on the shift key, it goes back to squishing and squash again. So in that case, if that happens to you, just let go of the shift key and drag from the corner to compensate for the size. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale it out to be the size I want it to be and press the enter key. Now this canvas is a little bit too dark um, for the painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and lighten it up a little bit. Um, we can go ahead and do this with an adjustment layer, by the way. So if you come on down to the adjustment layer icon, this little half and half circle here, give it a click and choose the levels from the list. From there, we can compensate for this. So I'm just gonna pull a little white point here just to lighten this up a touch. And maybe a little bit more just by taking the little midpoint here and just sliding over slightly. Just so it's not quite so dark. I just wanna make it light enough that you can really see the dog. So I've got that set right about here, which looks pretty good. And the last thing I wanna do is make the dog look like it's actually part of the canvas. So it's not just like sitting on top of it. Now, if you like it like this, you can leave it like this. Again, this is an effect. So take it as far as you want. But if I want to just be able to make it overlay the canvas, and just kind of absorb a little bit of the coloration and lighting and texture, go back up to the dog layer for a second and just change his blending mode from normal to something like multiply or darken, color burn, might be a little harsh, but any one of these ones at the top, and it's gonna just go ahead and just kind of Push in that canvas, give a little bit of that coloration. If you zoom in really close, you'll see it kind of absorbs some of the texture. Oops, uh, let me turn off the background layer real quick. It turns off some of the texture a little bit, so you can kind of see, you get a little bit of that papery texture in there, or turns on the texture, by the way. And it just makes it look a little more natural. Now, if you do want to kind of shift around the painting a little bit more, what you can do is you can always come over here to the dog's layer, turn off the little link icon in between the layer mask and the main layer itself and use your move tool up here at the top. When you do that, so long as you're on the paint layer, as you can see, not in the layer mask here, but on the paint layer here, clicking and dragging will allow you to move this around without affecting the dog at all. It will also allow you to transform. So if I do control T or command T for transform, I can still scale this out or move it around as I need to, to compensate for the dog. And also that goes if for whatever reason, like half the dog's missing, maybe like your texture doesn't cover up the whole dog. So just make sure to move it in place so it does cover everything up. But when you're done, it is important to always make sure to come back and turn that little link icon on again. So let's do this. Leave the dog open, go to file open and open up this art materials, artistic brush canvas. Or this can be any real canvas you want. The idea here is I have got these little tiny droplets of paint and I want to convert them into brushes. So first off, I'm going to zoom in nice and close so I can see what I'm doing like so. And now that I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and um, first off, desaturate this image adjustments and desaturate. And the reason why is because color doesn't really have anything to play when you're making brushes. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my levels adjustment, just crank it up so the backdrop is pure white and my strokes are darker, but not solid black. And the reason why is I want them to be a little gray in the middle. So you get that semi-transparent effect to make it look like they're kind of see-through. So if I go to image adjustments and levels, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to crank up that little white point here, just past this little peak. And that's just going to make sure that all of this area down here just goes solid white. So this becomes completely transparent when we're done. And I'm gonna take this, the dark gray slider on the far left and just slide it to the right a little bit. And you see those little uh, droplets like here, 
they start to become pretty dark. I don't want to go so far over that solid black, but just enough that there's a little bit of noise inside of it like that. And when I press OK, that should be fine. Now to create my brush, I'm going to grab a lasso tool right over here. Um, L if you want the shortcut or shift L if you need to switch between the various lasso tools in the list. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw a little circle. Just click and drag around the little piece I want to convert to a brush. Now, under my edit menu, scroll on down to where it says define brush preset. Give it a click and I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to go and call this uh, ink splatter one and press OK. And while we're here, we can actually make several brushes. For example, maybe I want to switch back over to my lasso tool for a second and grab like this little cluster of droplets here and then go to edit define brush preset and call this uh, splatter two. And maybe I want to take like a whole group of them, right? So maybe I come up here and maybe find like a nice little area of a bunch of splatters. And I can just kind of click drag, draw a nice little selection around them like so, and then edit define brush preset. And I'll call this like various splatters. So you can do this all around the canvas. You can come over to the other side too, and you can grab some here, maybe like that little splatter down there, right? Again, just circle around it, edit, define brush pre preset, name it, etc., etc., etc. All right, so you can have 50 when you're done. And every time I do that, you're going to see it automatically changed the brush tool for me, and it showed me a little outline of what this looks like. Now, if you're only ever seen like a crosshair, just be aware that that's probably because the caps lock key is hit. It goes between precision, <laughs> precision mode and actual brush. So you can go back and forth between that. So you have the correct tool available to you. But now when that set, the next thing I can go ahead and do is I can pop on up with my brush tool selected and any of those brushes I just made, if I click the little arrow next to the little brush icon, they'll be at the bottom of the list. All these ink splatter one, two, various splatters, etc. These are all the ones I just created, even though they don't look like them at the moment. But what we're going to do is we're going to give a little variation. So every time I use it, it's not going to look the same. Now, what you're looking for is this right here. Newer versions of Photoshop. It should be right next to your brush menu. Older versions, I think it was kind of off over to the side. It's been a while since I've used them, but it's actually called the brush settings panel, and it can always be found underneath your window menu under brush settings here too, just in case you don't see this little icon. But if you give it a click, I want to jump in here. And the only thing I really need to do is jump into shape dynamics, click on the word, not just a little check mark, but physically on the word here. So that makes sure that the settings on the right are the correct settings because each one of these represents something entirely different. All right. So again, I'm on shape dynamics. I'm going to crank up the size jitter. So every time I use this brush, it will be a different size. It's not going to always be the same little, um, like 50 pixel splatter. It'll be like 50 and then maybe 75 and then like 25 and so on, depending on how I set this up. So, um, it will always be different. So it gets a little variation. I'm not gonna even mess with minimum diameter. I'm gonna leave that at zero so it can be as small as it wants to be. Angle jitter, maybe we'll give a little bit of angle jitter just so, you know, kind of randomizes that way. And we'll even do a, like a flip X jitter and a flip Y jitter so it kind of mirrors itself periodically. So that way it's really gonna give some, some great variation as I paint with this. Now, it is important that when you're done, you do wanna hit the plus icon at the bottom and give it a name. Maybe for example, each splatter one, uh, with settings. So that way it'll save an additional copy of this with the tool settings we just plugged in. So we don't have to set them up every single time that we use this brush. And I'm going to do the same thing for any of the other brushes I made. Now I'm not going to do them all here per se, because you know, you may have, um, well, other things you want to do with your day besides just watch me do this. But if I grab ink splatter two, again, it's just clicking on shape dynamics, crank up some size jitter, crank a little bit on the angle, not too far, just a little bit. And then, you know, hit the flips. So that way they'll flip and create mirrors periodically. And now with those set, I can go ahead and hit the plus at the bottom and just choose with settings. So it's a real fast process. It doesn't take very long to set these up, but the cool thing is now they have these brushes. If I come back over to the pug image and I click on his layer mask here, right? So again, I'm on the pugs layer mask. I'm just going to go in and depending on the color I work with, whether 
I have this set to black or white. We're only working with black or white here right now. The settings on this, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this opacity to 100, flow 100, smoothing 0, and angle 0. Mode, of course, is set to normal. But if I use the color white while I paint, look what happens. Right? Every time I click, as you can see, it puts a little more paint kind of just spilled over here. And every time I click also, you see like it's a different size and a different angle. If you draw a line, it's a little weird. And by the way, it's really weird when you get to the edge because guess what? Remember the edge of the canvas, the edge of the painting? That's where it is. So I do have to be careful to try not to approach that edge or I'd have to come back to the, the little lock icon in between these, choose the main layer with the paint and then move it around accordingly. So of course it compensates for that edge. But these extra little splatters just give it the impression that, okay, well, maybe it is an oil painting. Maybe it's not just like this perfect little woodcut or something. It actually has a little variation. And of course, I can even switch over to my other brush that I already made. And every time I click with it, as you can see, again, passing 100. Every time I click with it, adds a little more. Now, the cool thing is if you switch over to black, when I paint with black, look what happens here. You see how it kind of acts as an eraser? It erases a little bit more. So that way I can just kind of delete a little bit here and there. If I want to make it look like it's kind of was dripped on or watermarked or something, and it just gives a little more variation. Now it gets really interesting though, if you use the color white and then come on in with either a reduced opacity, let me take this down to like 30%. And when you paint, as you can see, every time I click, it allows me to build up kind of a little more variation to make it look like it kind of dribbled in spot. So again, every time I kind of click, as you can see, I can build up these little sort of blunders of color. I don't know if blunder is the right word, but it just gives it, make it makes it look like it's a little more watermarked and a little more torn up and imperfect. And you can do that wherever you want, even over some of the details, just here and there, just to make it look like it's not this perfect digital cutout. So it's just a quick little way you can kind of go through and add some more variation to this to make it look like, oh, hey, maybe it is kind of a painting or, you know, they did a little bit more than just what we explored inside of this video.